been looking at Earth ships for like seven years. Yeah. I bicycled the lower 48 states and studied them the entire time and I finally made it. You made it. So last night was pretty awesome. We did the hot springs after I felt better and after I ate food. It was dark. I didn't want to bring my camera out. So this morning I'm going to just kind of give you guys a quick look of what we are, where we are. And yeah, this is my walk. About to walk into the restaurant here. Out of the space that we're staying in to the main space where you can enter into the bathhouses and everything. Pretty cool stuff this morning. It's a lot brighter today. Cliff wall is really cool next to the springs over there. Okay, pretty close. So we got the, the foot bath. I am here. Really sweet. And then they got private pools over there. So I left my bathing suit in my locker last night because I didn't realize I had to get the key back. I went there this morning, didn't work. Everything gets removed after 10 p.m. So they're gonna look for my bathing suit and my belt so that I can go swimming and use my belt later for my ride. Hopefully we find it. Got my shorts back. Now it's time to put them on. For everybody's privacy, I'm gonna leave my camera in my locker so I don't have to worry about it. Now I'm gonna go soak for about 15 minutes since it took a, about 20 to get my shorts back. After a nice soak, it's time to go get ready to ride. Maybe eat some breakfast. A lot of times I don't eat breakfast. I usually fast in the mornings, but I didn't feel a whole lot last night, so I'm feeling pretty hungry. So now, let's try these shorts off so we don't weigh my bags down. If you guys haven't seen or used one of these before, let me know in the comments. All I'm gonna do is stuff it in. Hold it down. So what it does is takes out most of the moisture and the dry dryer. But it makes it dry enough, or it won't be as heavy in my queue. Voila, nice and light, not wet, easy day. Case three of the Ojo Caliente Mineral Springs. I'll let you guys read it. Pause it if you need to. What are you having for breakfast this morning? I'm thinking build your own omelet. What are you having in it? Ooh, cheese, spinach, onion, salsa, corn tortillas, and hopefully hash browns. Hungry girl. Okay. I'm waiting for my orange juice and cranberry. So hungry, I forgot to share it. I ended up with the breakfast tacos and a side of bacon. And Melissa had her omelet that she said she was gonna have. We were hungry and it's delicious. I also got this cranberry orange mix without the alcohol. Been like that for 11 plus years now. Just like that, we're off. Saying goodbye to Ojo Caliente behind us. We're on the move again. We've got a big climb, decent climb today, and going over the gorge, Rio Grande, maybe even checking out our ship location. Back on US 285. We're gonna be on here for a little while until we do uh, a detour off of it to go to Carson, I think it is, which will save us a lot of headaches, scares, being on that main road, going through the gorge area. Thankful for the locals telling us the other ways. Already shedding off layers, just about two miles in and getting more comfortable. Yay. Definitely warmer than yesterday, which is cool. Good. Got reacquainted to the seat. I'm definitely feeling better about today than I was yesterday. My legs feel better. My body feels decent. The weather feels much better to me. It's all over great. In these videos that I be posting, this will be the first time I ever do all the riding stuff after. So having it in advance is new for me. And it's a lot more work. 
I knew it was gonna be, that's why I never wanted to do it. But I'm doing it for you guys. I love my new riding pants from Jay Walkers. They're nice, they're breathable, they're stretchy, feel good. Yep. In the distance, way down there, is Carson National Forest. And right now we're just climbing this hill. Most is way there in the distance. Really enjoy riding with Melissa. She's a great bike buddy and uh Great human, great friend. Glad we met at Ragbra and continue our adventures. And uh, it's amazing. How you feeling? Good. Awesome. A little bit of headwind. Smile, but still headwind. All right, crossing into Carson National Forest. Those are nice ones when you can get mostly up. It's <laughs> the so last segment before we get off this 285 and head towards the gorge. Wasn't too bad of a climb. A lot less than I thought it was going to be. This is it. Yeah, right over here. <laughs> Not normally something I'd be uh, encouraging to show off, but uh, Melissa went to the bathroom in the woods over here, like over there, and uh, this is what she came out with. I'm guessing this is, oh, it's Uber Lube. Uber Lube, oh man, someone's having a lot of fun with that thing. And for like $95, $95? they left it. $95? Wow, they bought it on, like two weeks ago. <laughs> well, after that entertainment, it's time to go downhill. And the downhill starts. A little Melissa ahead of me. Mountains look beautiful in the distance. Glad I'm not climbing them though. I can just look out. not a super intense downhill but it's a nice cruise we're doing about 17 miles an hour right now and uh i think we'll do this for about six miles this is a nice little section Butt break. Time for a butt break. Stay on the coast. Pretty few. A 
Love my green gear. Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm not really wanting them to go by me. I can't hear. Yeah, a little punji uh, grade right there. Car's coming. Whew. Neat little A-frame out there to the left. See how this potential road looks in a little bit. Maybe it's the way we can go. If not, we'll add some more miles to us. Not much happening. Kind of a boring stretch of road. We got the mountains to look at. There's nothing really happening on the road. So, which is good. Better than having some chaos. How you doing? Want a quick break? Right back. You know, okay? Good. Finally made it to the end of this road. We're about a mile away from Earthship, Earth Homes. We're at the west rim of the Gorge Bridge, which we'll be going over after our uh, stop at the community. Oh, hey, hey, Melissa, we made it to the end of this road. And look, right there's the Earth Homes. We're so close. That's our next stop. One more mile, and then it's a break time. Potty breaks and tour, hopefully. I finally saw a bus, too. That guy that was just walking got off the bus. Super pretty. I'm super excited. I've been wanting to come see these for like seven or eight years now. When I learned about yurts and alternative homes in Massachusetts. And all on my journey, I kept watching these videos and learning about these. It's so cool to see so many of them. I'm so happy, Melissa. This made my trip all right here. Thank you. Earthship Biotech, we made it! I'm gonna put my bike against the bench. Wow! I'm so excited right now. So amazing. Oh, this is so sweet. So this is the barrier, this is the garden area. And then... Hi, how are you guys? Good, how are you? It's a beautiful Monday and we made it. Welcome. Yeah, I've been looking at Earthships for like seven years. Yeah. I bicycled the lower 48 states and studied them the entire time and I finally made it. You made it. I made it. <laughs> Glad you got your bike up here. Yeah, yeah. What's an earth sim like? Imagine being on the earth with everything you need and stuck there. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. Operation of earth ships. Yeah, so with the uh, huge advancements over the last like decade of solar power, it's probably helped a lot. Yeah, we, we use basically zero wind anymore in the new structures. Nice. Not necessary. Yeah. At least here we have sun, so there's no reason to do anything more complicated than throw a panel up there, get a new battery that lasts 30 years, and let yeah. the system run itself. Exactly. For the for the money, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, yeah, if you're building somewhere else, you may have to look into <clears throat> geothermal wind energy. Mm -hmm. If you're in a place where you don't get sun. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're not in the sun, I almost feel like you're probably not looking for the right thing to do. <laughs> Well, thanks guys, appreciate it. So do you guys know how many Earthships are outside of the communities in New Mexico? 
in New Mexico, in, in Taos County, there is about 200. Outside of the communities? So in, in this uh, subdivision, there's 95. Okay. Within Taos County, there's around 200. Okay. Because the other count? We, we, we estimate about 4,000, but you know, people can, can build them and not tell us. Yeah. So, it's about 70 in Colorado. Yeah. That I know of. There are, uh, if you look at our list of like where they're located, Colorado is the other state that has like the, the majority. A long list. Yeah. Oh, look at that. The one in Boulder, that's the uh, education place, isn't it? Do you know? Oh, that I don't know. Okay. I, I, haven't, I haven't been to any of them in Colorado, so. Fair. You can tell me. I don't know if you guys are interested. You guys don't have a town in here that has an Earthship, or a couple of them at least. Black uh, Forest. I, we can write those down. Put them on the next list. Yeah, add Black Forest. Ooh, that, that is totally out of date. <laughs> all, that's an Earthship thing. We're not. We're not super up to the moment, this thing. Yeah, there's no need so to be. Find, uh, someone tells us about a new one, we'll like look it up and put it on that list the next time. We're... Nice. Yeah. So something else I got a question on is, does, uh, for like Taos County, can you guys just build without, do you guys have to have permits at all or is there? Oh yeah, there's a ton of permitting. We're, there we're still build, is? We have to build okay. the specific building codes. Okay. Uh, the advantage here is that founder Mike has been doing this here since the 70s. Yeah, so he's got a lot of so support. So he's fought all the fights. He knows exactly what we have to do. If yeah. you were looking to do this somewhere else, it's, it's a ground up process. Here. Yeah. Even if people say something is possible, someone is going to eventually throw a stone in your path right to make it more difficult. Yeah, well, when I tell people about these, they're like, oh, is that a hippie community type thing? I mean, like, I, I'm fine uh, with that term. I'm yeah. kind of a hippie, but I'm a modern day hippie. people in the community, it is a huge range. Yeah. There are people that make me look tame. They're super hippies, and there's other people that are just yeah. not what you would expect or no. Mm -hmm. Not with it's not a homogenous. Yeah, everyone thinks that it's really just like commune. And the more commercial it gets, the more we have people coming from outside who want to build like massive, expensive structures, and they're they're not hippies at all. They're just you know, stop paying bills, mm -hmm. which is the alternative that we all want to avoid. Which is kind of what we're hoping for is to get to be a bit more mainstream. That people that you wouldn't necessarily think would be interested in doing this. Mm -hmm start to take a look at it and go, oh, I don't have dreadlocks, but that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I appreciate all the information, guys. Let's go look out in the garden. Right here. So that's Mike Reynolds, the founder of Earth Chips. It's so cool. <clears throat> the windows. <clears throat> so amazing. Yes, and then when it cools off. Yeah. We got chives growing, right, you know, cauliflowers. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Food dehydrator. Naturally done. Our walls behind yeah, here, dome wall. Look at that, tires. Are basic needs are comfortable shelter that requires no fuel, electricity, containment and treatment of our human waste, and containment and treatment of our garbage. The urchin is that vessel. That's the best this one. This is a greenhouse that is also a sewage treatment system. It does not let one drop of water escape from the roof. We channel it into a cistern, filter it to our faucets and the shower, and into rubber lined cells that will plants use food. The plants clean up the water good enough to flush your toilet. The water goes from the toilet outside to the landscape, uses that water four times. 
in the process of providing the utility. I want to be able to part, not part with the utility company. So cool. Just the art. to provide sustenance for people. And um, if we don't do this, then we are dependent on infrastructure. Infrastructure is very scary and very dangerous and very mismanaged. And the goals of infrastructure are more about power and money than they are sustenance of people. Our filtration system. Oh, yeah, the earth's shipping. Oh, yeah, there's that one. That one's cool. It's got banana trees and stuff in it. Oh, yeah, they're all. That's a huge. There's 95, they said, on this property. Yep. So you can see all the water systems and everything else, solar. So all this gets drained into here, and this is a big system right here. I think this is a 3,000 gallon, they said. And all the solar. Yes. Oh, I think they mean over there, right? Yes. Good angle. Look at the photo of that one. Nice one. So amazing. We're we'll gonna check out these big ones before we go. So cool. Testing site. I think it's sustainable. It's cool. It's like three earth ships right there. This one's massive. What do you think, Melissa? What do you think about earth ships? Incredible. Quick rest stop break before we go over the Gorge Bridge here. Pretty sweet. You ready to go over this bridge? Okay, on the road again. You guys look great. Have a great day. <laughs> it's funny, I saw them when we came in, but I thought they were statues. Yeah, just be a minute. Their camo is on point. Monday. Yeah, it's deep. Deep down there. Happy Monday. Wow, it's so 
deep in there. It's so grand. Yeah, the Rio Grande, Grand River. It used to be grander, but it, it's kind of a, a wimp now. <laughs> With that car turn, we're turning. What you doing, pup? What you doing? What you doing? Hello. Hi. He's such a good dog compared to the rest. Hello. At least you guys are all caged today. Or controllable. Came to Taos in 2020, started my journey and I drove through New Mexico. Kind of why I wanted to do this route in New Mexico as a redemption. A friend of mine, John O'Kelly lives here. He's from my hometown, Carver, Massachusetts. Yeah, he lives right down the street. So we're gonna make a quick detour, say hi to him and his family real quick before we continue to our spot for the night. Climbing this hill, walking it because my legs are tired. Melissa's legs are tired. We're just making it happen. When we're gonna get to the top of this hill, say hi to my buddy, Sean and Allison. We have arrived. Uh, let's see, sunset at 5.40, so we'll have until 6.10 before dark. Have until 6.10? Before dark, so uh, 5.10. So we're about an hour, but we're only about a half hour away. It's mostly flat or downhill, right? Besides that little incline at the end there? Yeah, you get up, because you're going across Polonia. Yeah. Then you gotta go up that hill. That you can see from yeah, on the other side. And you'll be on Blueberry Hill? Yeah, you will be on Blueberry Hill, but from there. It says uh, Los Alamatos. Alamatos? Oh, really? It's like right across, like diagonally across from oh. lower. Then I don't know. Well, that's where it's saying to go right now. So we'll find out. Quick little visit with some hometown friends. Sun's already down. Now it's, we gotta beat the light. We got four and a half miles to make it to our destination. Got four miles. Go on left. All right, we'll pet on time. Uh, you wanna go over here on the dirt? Over here? No other dirt. We had to turn around because the road that it told us to take didn't exist. It ended up in somebody's driveway. Now we're back on this sketchy road coming up. See how well this works. Made it. Oh. oh man, that was a lot of work.
really happening out of me.